So I'm going to get to that um, tangent, tangent, whatever the word is, I'm going to get to that third tool, and that's called the human microphone. So we're going to do this together to start off our interactive. This is Mario Savio. How many people do not know who Mario Savio is? Do raise your hand. All right. Oh he God. is a fucking killer dude <laughs> who lived till 96, born in 42, and at age 22, he just, <coughs> go on YouTube and watch it. He is a powerful speaker who led the free speech movement in Berkeley. Here's his most famous speech. And in order for you to digest it, back to the human microphone, I'm going to tell you this before we do it. McLuhan said, I don't know what I think until I've said it. Joan Didion said, I don't know what I think until I've written it. So the human microphone is, you're going to concentrate on hearing the words I say you know, the first three word, four words are there is a time. So you're going to go, oh, there is a time. So you're going to hear it, and it's going to come out of your mouth. But how much are you going to digest what there is a time means? Because it's like cheerleading or, you know, rooting. Or like I went to the Pogues concert. Have you ever gone to the Pogues? It's like 2,000 drunk males. And they're all <laughs> holding a beer in this hand. And they're reciting every word. <laughs> but every eighth guy is drunk, so four of their friends are holding them up. <laughs> so this is all comes out of James Joyce, so it's that, that oral culture where alcohol and oral is important. So this, this is the experiment. The experiment is how much is the micro, human microphone actually work? Now, if we were 500 protesters going down the street, and, and, and I, we want to tell the people, five, 400 people back, that the cops have just blocked Broadway and we're going to turn on 3rd Street, it's great. We are turning on 3rd Street. And then everybody would go, we are turning on 3rd Street. And they would all know. Well, they could be looking at their cell phones or texting, but they're doing what with the ear so everybody can hear it. And they're doing it with repeating the information. But like Zizek, the foremost Lacanian Marxist of the world. How many people ever heard or read Zizek? Check him out, man. This guy is fun. He said, he goes to New York with the human microphone exercise, and he goes, okay, PWB, it's okay. And everybody goes, it's okay to fuck animals, to fuck animals, <laughs> if, if we want to. Now, he's not saying, he's not promoting you should. He's just saying, aren't we talking about freedom and we should be able to do anything we want if it doesn't harm someone? And, and they all go, wait a minute. <laughs> so they finally, like, he, he shows them, put the skids on this tool we're using. Wait a minute. So we're going to do Mario together. Ready? I, I, none of this whippy Sunday evening shit. Let's belt it up like you mean it, like Mario would. There is a time. There, there is, is a time. time. When the operation of the machine. When the operation of the machine. Becomes so odious. Becomes so odious. Makes you so sick at heart. Makes you so sick at heart. That you can't take part. That you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. You can't even passively take part. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears. And upon the wheels. And upon the wheels. And upon the levers. And upon the levers. Upon the apparatus. Upon the apparatus. And you've got to make it stop. And you've, got to make it stop. and you've got to indicate to the people who run it. And you've got to indicate to the people who run it. To the people who own it. To the people who own it. That own that shit. That, <laughs> that unless you're free, unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all. The machine will be prevented from working at all. Let's hear it from Marvin.
20, for a 22 year old to just like yell that out, that, that shit still moves me. And the fact that the occupiers, and I'm, I'm not trying to separate myself from the occupiers because one of my main problems with it was 99%, 1%. It's like, aren't you trying to say we're all one? And we're trying to, like Rodney King, we're all trying to get along. But uh, one person brought my attention a while. I says, listen, it's never been divided like that. Loudly. So that was good. So again, it's not so much like the guy hassled me at Craig Baldwin's place last night. He says, McClellan's a conservative. I go, look it, I want to talk about this, but mainly is Marshall promoted sort of Alan Watts. That suspended judgment is where you're going to be able to uncover the hidden effects of the things you invent. So if you have a point of view, as Marshall said, understanding is not having a point of view. So that's an important thing. If you're in your lonely teenage room, you go, I hate cell phones or I love cell phones. But when you're with one or more people, if you try to not have a point of view, you may be able to uncover the hidden effects of things you met. So what? You uncover the hidden effects of things you met. What is that going to do? Well, you turn to Ezra Pound, one of uh, who read for presidents. Uh, Pound for Prez. <laughs> <laughs> That's spooky because people love to hate Ezra Pound. He's anti-Semitic. Well, listen, he is a poet. So can you separate the art from the artist? Ezra Pound said that Artists are the antenna of the race. There they are. They're the antenna of the race. They're broadcasting the hidden psychic effects so we can see the hidden psychic effects. So it's like Andre Serrano put a crucifix in a mayo jar filled with urine, and people went, that's sick. You know, and took a picture of it, and they said, New York City, our Arts Council gave this guy money to do that. It's like, look at it. Why have we gotten to the point in our world that someone would do that? That's what it's about. It's not saying, oh, that's horrible, we did that. So that suspended judgment means you're trying to suss out what these things do to us. And here's Pound's, what Pound taught Marshall. The key was that then you can cope with them. So it's all that back to Lakoff hope, and I would say it's the hope to cope. So you're not like, oh, my cell phone, Ugh. You know, it's like, I gotta get my car fixed. So we shape our tools, then they shape us. In other words, we shape spoken word, and then all of a sudden we're like, I've gotta use spoken word. Uh, George Collins said, uh, how could you ever have a civil war? You know, you can't. Civil means city. And you could have it. But we usually think civil means acting nice to each other. So how could you ever have a war where people act nice to each other? So words don't always work. But we have them, so we think we got to use them. Even though they don't work all the time, we're still going to use them. So Marshall's not saying you got to abandon your tools. He said, you, if you uncover the hidden effects, you may be able to cope with them. A futurist was asked, well, what, what can we see in the future like this? This is like a crystal ball. Ooh, nudity. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can we see in the future? That's good, Well, Let's give it up for Will. Thank you.